Hi guys, this video is all about the highest mileage Tesla Model 3 in the country. Done 256,000 miles. So let's ask Chris how he's been getting on with the car, what he's spent and check out the car. So Chris, first of all, thank you very much for reaching out. And also I'm so glad that you were local to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pleasure. So first of all, how are you getting on with it? Amazing. Best car overall that I've ever owned. Uh, we've had it from new. From new, wow, from okay. From new, yeah. Uh, minimal amounts of work needed. It's never let us down. Honestly, it's the only car that I could say is better after all these miles than when it was new, wow. obviously. Well, um, we'll get into the detail in a second, but I was, uh, after we had a chat just, just now, I've, I found out that you're a massive petrol head too. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, <laughs> all from go. a kid. And uh, it's never changed though. I do love EVs as well now. You know, this is what Charge Heads is all about, finding the petrol heads that like electric cars as well. And you, we were talking about a few cars like an Almira GTI and yeah. uh, what was the M3 you had? It sounded pretty special. GT2 Imola edition, the last of the E36. See, I'd not heard of that. I'll put it on the screen um, and uh, so people can see what that looks like. I know what an E36 like, but that sounded like something very special. Chris, how, how have you put this many miles on the vehicle? Do you use it for work? What, what's the situation here? Uh, we run a show for business with uh, a selection of vehicles and yeah. obviously they all do high mileages but this was the first EV and uh, it's been absolutely amazing. And um, what do you think you've done mileage a year in it? It must have done, so it's what, 2019, so it's about six years old, so what, about 40, 50,000 years, miles a year? Yeah, it's, that's averaging, getting close to 50,000, but obviously we had the pandemic, which ah, yeah. uh, we don't really like talking about, where it was pretty much parked up for the duration, other than we did take the vulnerable to get the vaccinations when they were released, so yeah, we put yeah. a few miles on it, but, Predominantly, it's probably three and a half, four years worth of work. Yeah. Um, so if you average that out, it's probably nearer 60, 70. Wow, okay, fair play. And um, I've noticed that it's not just any Model 3, it's actually a performance, which is great to see. Uh, also, you've got some slightly different wheels on it as well. You've gone for 19 inch wheels? No, they're actually 18. So oh, they're 18. Put on. So people were telling me that you can't fit performance calipers and discs on uh, Model 3 with 18s, but I have with mine, but not on the rear. And I was told that the rears uh, don't allow you to put 18s. Are they a slightly different offset or? No, they're standard offset, but they are not. The Tesla 18 inch alloys right, so don't been... fit. Right. There are now aftermarket options okay. that allow fitment on the performance brakes. Yeah, and you've gone for the 18s, what, the ride comfort, cost of tyres, that sort it of stuff? It was a combination of increased range, ride comfort, and also selection availability and yeah. cost of the tyres because at the time, the 20 inch tires were very hard to get hold of yeah. if you could get hold of them. And so obviously the added benefit of the comfort and range on top. No, fair play. And I mean, just looking, we'll, we'll talk about what you've uh, spent in terms of maintenance in a second, but in terms of bodywork wise, it looks like it's got the telltale bits that both of mine have got, which is the uh, sort of the flaking on the, the paintwork there. But you said that you, you did actually used to have mud flaps when we had a quick chat. Yes, it, not from new, and um, because Tesla offered them down the line to help with the stone chip uh, problems. Okay. Okay. So they were fitted, but they then the joy of speed humps in the UK <laughs> yeah. kind of took pay, so yeah, we removed no them play. all together. Other than, you know, the, the wings and, I mean, the spoiler, which, I mean, they tend to go anyway, um, I can't really see that much more on it other than a couple of stone chips and, and bits and bobs, but no, is there anything else that you can see on the vehicle? Has it been pretty good bodywork-wise? Absolutely fine. When we took delivery of it, the rear door seals weren't fully attached and there was a hairline scratch on one of the bits of the chrome trim. Right. That was it. It was ceramic coated. Okay. From pretty much near about two, three weeks old it was yeah. when we had it ceramic coated. So it cleans up pretty nice then, basically. 
it's worn off now after a quarter of a million miles. <laughs> um, yeah, you, yeah, when you say it like that, a quarter of a million miles. What's the interior like? And I'm guessing there's quite a few people. Do you want to open the door for us? Yeah, of course. Are there people in and out the back, in and out the front? Oh, wow, OK. Yeah, I mean, have a look. <laughs> Apologies about the state of it. Oh, no, no. So, it looks tidier than mine at the moment. That is really clean. So people are normally in the back of this when you're driving around, are they? Predominantly the back, uh, but we do also have some that sit in the front and obviously the driver's seat is used all the time. Yeah, I suppose there's a little bit, there's a little bit of sag there, but I mean for a quarter of a million miles, you yeah. know, that is... Totally original. The only thing that's been changed on the seat was the seat occupancy sensor. I am in love with this steering wheel. <laughs> Where did you get that from? Um, that I got from Facebook, ironically. The only reason we changed it is because my other half has a habit of digging nails in uh, okay, and started yeah, yeah. the leather coming Can away. Can I have a sit in? Of course, help yourself. Wicked. Here we go, people. So there we go, 256,000 miles. The, uh, the efficiency is pretty good there. Have you got an efficiency from like day dot at all? Do you remember what it was? I have actually got it logged on Tesla 5, okay, other than cool. about the first 30 miles. Yeah. Um, it's around the 280 watts per mile, I believe, from memory. OK, that's pretty good then. Like I said, the interior is, other than a little bit of sag on the driver's seat, is, is bang on. Yeah. So get into the uh, maintenance, service and maintenance on the vehicle. I'm sure you've gone through a few tyres. Um, <laughs> Uh, I won't ask how many tyres you've gone through, you probably won't remember, but what, what other bits have been done to the car other than tyres? Right, it recently, well I say recently, about 20,000 miles ago it had front discs and pads. For the first time? Yeah, still on original rears, what? discs and pads. What? <laughs> How many miles? 256,000 and the fronts were changed. I think it was about 240,000, give or take. I, I'm, not, I'm <laughs> literally baffled. 240,000 miles until the distant pads were changed. That is bananas. Um, other than that... So Chris, sorry. Chris, Chris, <laughs> did, have you ever touched the brake pedal? <laughs> <laughs> well... Occasionally, yeah, pretty much once a month yeah, uh, yeah. to clean the discs off. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, good five or ten, 60 to zero, standing on the brake pedal okay, to get yeah. the road rust off of the service, okay. surface. So did, um, did you ever have the distant pads serviced but not changed? Uh, other than replaced, it was, I forget the mileage, probably about 100, 150,000 miles. I had them stripped down and cleaned, but yeah. that was with Cleveley, and they okay, said yeah. they were absolutely fine. They really didn't even need so, cleaning. So Cleveley EV are a great independent EV service centre. Uh, they got mobile mechanics, and they got a great uh, operation in Cheltenham. And if you check this video up here, this is where I visited them with my Tesla Model 3 Rusty uh, to sort out some bits. So. Have you, other than the steering wheel and the wheels, are there any other modifications on the car? Rear arms on the back that uh, are apparently quite prone at about 100,000 miles. The adhesive on the bush okay. gives way and it makes a knocking noise. So that happened at pretty much bang on 100,000 right. and you need to drop the rear subframe to replace them. I actually located upgraded aftermarket mountain pass performance parts <laughs> that Hopefully, well, they've not suffered in yeah. over 150,000 miles since it was done, but also because they come with shorter bolts, they were able to cut the old bolts off and didn't have to drop the subframe. So okay. it saved yeah. on that as well. So that's the only other modification as such. If you go to this video up here, you'll see the video of some mountain pass performance um, spherical bearings that myself and friend Clive fitted. So mountain pass performance, they do provide some fantastic aftermarket uh, equipment for Teslas. I've got their comfort uh, soft height adjustable coilovers on Rusty, my other Tesla, and there's a video up here with that one there. The video's coming thick and fast here. Um, so I know it's great to hear. It's great to hear that um, you found something that, you know, uh, gives it better longevity and saves having to do extra work on the vehicle. That's great. So you've mentioned you've done the distant pads at the front. Yes. And you've done the distant pads at the back. Yes. Anything else? It's also had 
another pair of arms on the rear. I forget. I think they're just upper arms. Yeah. Um, it's had the lower front bushes done. Yeah. And the upper arms that are common for yeah, the yeah, creaking. For the it had it had the creaky noises, and again, Cleveley re-greased them. Yeah. This was at probably about. 80, 90,000, I think. Okay. They said it would be a short term fix, is what they yeah. presumed, but it's been perfect ever <laughs> since. So. That's good news. So um, it sounds like quite a lot of the bushings you've done, you've not had to redo any of them since then. No, no. no. It's, it's, it's been fantastic. I mean, obviously, you've, the state of the UK roads, it's going to take its toll, but we do yeah. do a lot of motorway miles that's not quite as bad as what some towns would be, but yeah, yeah it's still a testament to it. As soon as you get into the villages, it's, oh, it's, it's awful, isn't it? Don't get me started on potholes. <laughs> Don't get me started. So, um, anything else that's gone wrong on the car that needed fixing at all? Air conditioning systems? No, it's never been re-gassed. Obviously, I've had the filters changed. Okay. Um, yeah, the co cabin filters. And yeah, stuff. The, yeah, the pollen filters. Switch on the boot, the outside switch. Which yep. that played up and okay. um, I had that replaced. They came, the mobile ranger came and done that for an absolutely paltry fee of, I think it was £37 something. Oh, wow. Parts and labour. I was honestly don't Cleveland know. Again, was it? No, that was Tesla, oh, Tesla. a Tesla okay. mobile ranger. Te Tesla really surprised me. Sometimes it is cheap as chips. But um, okay, so what about the oil on the drive? the um drive units i did have that done again by cleveley okay um i think that was at about one hundred and fifty thousand. um so they recommended that they apparently they recommend it at about a hundred thousand yeah. but i wasn't aware of that but it wasn't showing any signs it was more a preventative rather yeah. than yeah sure because there was any issue there okay yeah because that's something that's going through my mind although tesla seem to think that you don't need to do it and uh, cleveland say you know it's a good i'm not sure be interesting to hear what people think uh whack it in the comments or if anyone's had a drive unit fail on a model 3 or model y just to recap so lots of tires surprisingly yes we have obviously gone through lots of tires but we put when michelin brought the e-premacy out yeah we put those on. I have had about, out of, off of the fronts, this is exceptional, about 95,000, I believe, and the rear's 55,000. Wow. So the e-premises definitely do add to the longevity t okay. compared to others. So, and they're still cracking tires, the grip and yeah. noise level and everything. Wow, uh, okay. Yeah, Impressive. fantastic. So, not too many tyres then. Um, <laughs> so what's your plan? I mean, are you, are you looking to break the 300,000 mark? What, are you looking to sell it soon? How much you want for it? <laughs> <laughs> How much are you offering for it? Uh, uh, I honestly don't know what it would be worth now, especially considering what you gave for yours, which was a phenomenal deal. Yeah. Um, it almost feels like a member of the family. It's been with us so long, but... We are actually test driving the new Model Y next Sunday at Leicester Ooh, Space Centre. So nice. You'll have to let us know how you get on. Do, do we know what, um, how many kilowatt hours it's got left? I can uh, have a look on the laptop before you see what that... Yeah, that'll be awesome. And then we'll have a look at the other car that you've brought with you, <laughs> which is exceptionally exciting. So this is Tesla Fi, 65 kilowatt hour. That's really good. Yeah. And that's really good. That's a summary of oh. the AC-DC breakdown. So AC charges 56,000 kilowatt hours and DC 22,637. So predominantly AC charged. So I think based on that and based on the data of my car, I haven't seen a couple of high mileage test model threes. It just it is pointing to the fact that having AC charging more than DC charging is better than the battery. But I'd like to see more examples of that. So if you have got a high mileage test model three or why, uh, please get in touch. Uh, but let's have a look at this other car that um, Chris has brought today. So some might know what this car is. This is in fact a BMW M70. So it's an i7, but the M version. And when I saw uh, Chris and his good lady pull up in this, I was like, wow, what an absolute beast. Can you tell us, Chris, a bit about the spec and how much it was and how, how it is? What's it been like to drive? 
Well, it's uh, 650 horsepower. Wow. Uh, BMW say 60 in three and a half seconds, but a lot of people have clocked it quicker. Really? List price, just over 185,000. How'd you get into it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, so, uh, okay. Self-opening doors, self-closing doors. Yeah. Looks like a phone in the... <laughs> Basically, that's where it's all controlled. You've got 34 oh. speaker stereo with 4D vibration in all four of wow. the court main seats. This is pimpalicious, this is, isn't it? Oh. I think I remember seeing this down in Goodwood Festival of Speed. I don't think it was the M70, though. Look, yeah. So we've got USB connections. USB. You can get, like, iPad holders and things like that on it. Let me just move. I'll tell you what. What I noticed straight away is the fact that I've got cushion on my headrest. It's so comfortable. <laughs> And I'm, I'm guessing these, yeah, the seats go straight out as well. They do recline. I'll show you the other side because that's got very, very nice. Look at the speakers, Bowers and Wilkins. It's a very cool design. This one has a really good party piece. It takes a while to do, but looks like it's turning into a robot. <laughs> <laughs> Optimus has jumped in the passenger seat. Oh wow! Wow, still going. It's still going. Oh, oh, and yeah, give it time. <laughs> I'm sitting in the wrong seat here, people. <laughs> and if you want a massage or air conditioned seats, it's got that. Well, it is Mother's Day today. I think maybe. <laughs> uh... And then for one other little trick. So the blinds are going up, and we've got a TV that's bigger than my one in the lounge, actually. <laughs> and apparently it's 8K. I've not even got 8K. one of them in the house. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. So your clients that jump in, in this, are they, are they rather impressed? Uh, we've yet to have any other reaction other than amazement. <laughs> and that comes from any client. Yeah, no, awesome. And it's all touch screen and stuff all as well? All touch screen. Wow. And then the doors, they operate as a remote control for certain functions as well. So you watch Shaun the Sheep on Netflix, <laughs> brilliant. And uh, what, what's it like to drive? It's like driving a magic carpet, yeah. but a magic carpet that goes really quick. If you so want all to. air suspension. All air suspension. We've got the previous Gen 7 series as well. Yeah. The difference, it feels like there's five generations between them. I mean, wow. that is good. This yeah. is next level. Oh, I'm shutting the door and I don't even need to. What's it like? I mean, what's the efficiency like, that sort of thing? Um, Right, the battery, the usual capacity is just over 101 kilowatts, I believe. So it is a big right. battery in it. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, we've only had it about three, maybe four months now. Yeah. Um, so through the worst time of the year, weather-wise, and it's been getting regularly 280 to 300. Uh, when we've had the nicer days okay. like today, we've been seeing range of. 350 even 370 possibly okay and what's the max charging speed on it i'm guessing it's pretty it, decent it's not as good as tesla i think it maxes out at 190 or 195 kilowatt oh, but it does maintain bad. it yeah and i've seen it still pulling about 25 kilowatt at about 97 percent state of charge yeah that's that's pretty good i mean the thing is with the tesla yes it does 250 but it's kind of peak it doesn't do it for very long does it unfortunately no. Those no. seats look amazing though. It looks so comfortable. All ventilated. Ventilated, massage. massage. The armrests are heated as well in the front and back. So dare I ask, what is the uh, the retail ticket on something like this? Just over 185 for the spec on that. Wow, okay. Well, um, was it a dealer? Was it a demo? Was it bought brand new? It was or? brand new, unregistered, direct from BMW. Wow. Chris, thank you so much for bringing the cars down today. Really appreciate it. It was very short notice, and thank you very much for both of you bringing the cars. It's cool. been a pleasure. Wicked. Thanks, Chris. Thank Thanks you. for coming. Take Cheers. care. Well, just as a summary, it's just amazing to see Tesla Model 3s like Chris's that have had loads of miles put on them and very, very little service and maintenance. Mine seem to have a lot more service and maintenance on them, probably the way, the way I drive them, perhaps. If you like this kind of content, don't forget to subscribe because it really helps the channel. And don't forget, there's loads of other videos focused on modified EV, the EV conversion that I'm doing, and loads of other stuff in between that. So go and check out the back catalogue. There's loads in there.
We've also got an EV podcast, which is Sunday, eight o'clock, includes myself, Tim Aylen, Alex Grant, and Kevin Booker, and we talk about all different things in the EV landscape. So check it out, it's live, you can comment on there live, we'll answer your questions, etc. Eight o'clock Sunday, every week.